Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind. And people wonder why we can't stand these lefty hack journalists. I don't know why I keep using that word. I really should stop. These people are not journalists. We should, of course, call them what I usually call them when I correct myself, journalists. Smug, arrogant, deceitful, disrespectful. Think of a negative term. Think of a negative descriptive term, and that applies to most of these mainstream media journalist hacks. You know, they pretend that they're just neutral journalists attempting to get to the facts, doing their job. They don't have a horse in the race. Then, of course, they act like this, like a bunch of hateful activists. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So here's Carrie Lake dealing with two journalists. And I will say again. What I'll do you need, again. Jay? What do you need to okay. hear to feel okay with yeah, I'm, this? I'm done. Yeah. Okay. What I need to hear is how you answer the question when you're asked a direct question just answer the question it's a simple Jay. factual question steve asked it answer it. you were on the vp shortlist though do you feel like you're on the vp shortlist? you know what I, this this is uh, steve uh, uh, pardon me but steve and and both of you this is a creation of the media <laughs> i will tell you this i am i'm, I'm a fed up mom okay and mm -hmm. there's a millions of tens of millions of moms just like me I'm not worried about who Trump picks for a VP. He's going to pick someone great. Frankly, if there's like any Pence? president who doesn't need a VP, it's him. Yeah. But let me tell you this. It's like a dictator I will kind of situation where you would need a VP. I will tell you, yeah, that's really funny. This is called the circus, right? We got Bozo mm -hmm. and Bozo's friend. But let me tell you, Trump doesn't, I don't care who Trump picks as his VP. What I care mm -hmm. about is that the people in Arizona have a secure border, that we don't have fentanyl pouring across our country. Have you ever talked to a mother? Yes. Have you ever talked to a mother who's lost a son or daughter to fentanyl poisoning? You wouldn't be acting cocky like this, okay? Oh, I got your mic. I'm going to go flush it down the toilet right now. You guys, i got to get her downstairs. Thanks, guys. Out. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Karen. Bye, guys. I know the cameramen are actually conservatives, and you really literally can't stand what you have to record every day. Because I'll tell you this right now. The cameramen are usually independent operators, Amen. And, entrepreneurs. and you're entrepreneurs, and you know that some of the stuff you guys have to record is just nonsense. So I, I am with you, and the American people are with you. We want you to be doing better. We want the middle class to be doing better, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, and I know you're shaking your head. You know, real fair and balanced, real neutral. This part was obviously the worst. If there's like any that? president who doesn't need a VP, it's him. Yeah. But let me tell you this. It's like a dictator I kind of situation where you would I will tell you, yeah, that's really funny. This is called the circus, right? We got Bozo and Bozo's friend. Yeah, that's exactly what she's implying. You know, what a stupid, disrespectful remark. Narrative pushing instead of being fair and honest. If anybody doesn't need a VP, it's Trump. Essentially, the point that she was making was that Trump is his own brand, he's his own man. You know, the whole running mate vice president thing is already kind of a joke of a position to begin with. If anything, it's a stepping stone. You're just there to look nice and gain name recognition so you can then betray the president and try to run for president yourself like Mike Pence did. The point that she's making is that Trump doesn't need a VP. It's not relevant. And she said that she believes that he's going to do a good job. Did Trump do a good job with Mike Pence? You know, in hindsight, 2020, it's very easy to say absolutely not, but maybe at the time, Mike Pence was the right decision in order to win in 2016 before Trump had his own real political brand to take somebody like Mike Pence, who was relatively non-controversial and clearly appealed to evangelicals. I think it was a good decision at the time, so it's easy to scrutinize it as you look back 2020 hindsight. But anyways, let's not get stuck on tangents. The point that Carrie Lake was making was clear that she trusts that Trump's going to do a good job and that Trump is such a powerful entity himself. I mean, the conversation of a VP isn't really an important thing to be discussing. And the guy responds with, oh, you mean like a dictator situation? Because like orange man bad, he wants to install himself as a dictator? Come on. I mean, it's honestly repulsive. She responds with, yeah, that's really funny. This is like the circus. We got Bozo and Bozo's friend. You know, the interaction was short and sweet. Carrie Lake just doing Carrie Lake things, being an absolute freaking legend. But even though it was a hasty interaction, at least what we saw of it, you know, I think the image painted was absolutely clear. 
You have two individuals, two journalists, acting so aggressively, swearing, attacking, pushing narratives, doing the typical Trump fear-mongering shtick. That's, of course, what they were attempting to do. They want so badly to paint Carrie Lake as a dangerous MAGA conservative. Ooh, she's at the top of the list as Trump's potential VP. That's real scary, a Trump politician. Don't vote for her. They're continuously building these narratives. It's all they do, and it's a beautiful sight to behold seeing Carrie Lake take them on. I'm sure you guys enjoyed that clip. Let's move on to the second topic of this video. Still relating to Trump and his vice presidential pick, we've got big breaking news, and I mean really breaking. This news is breaking the internet. The narrative the media was setting was that Carrie Lake was one of the top choices to be Trump's VP. I don't think that's the case at all. I think Carrie Lake's running for the Senate. That's pretty much already set in stone. But apparently somebody else, someone very interesting, is now in the running. Would you consider Tucker Carlson on your VP list. Oh, I wow. want to give I want to give you a hypothetical here. You're a big sports fan. You know, like Nick Saban's going to retire at some point. And if you talk to the athletic director at Alabama, he would say he has a list. So, would Tucker Carlson be on your list of potential VPs? And how many names might be on that list as you sit and look and survey the political field? Well, first of all, you know, I did my first uh, you could call it counter programming, but I I won't call it that. But uh, Tucker wanted to do an interview during the first debate. And I think you know, because this is what your business is, we broke every record. Monster audience. In history, yeah. I think it just hit over 300 million people. But it was for that evening, over 207 million. It then got to 275 within a day or two. And the biggest ever was Oprah's interview with Michael Jackson, which was 125 million. So we almost doubled it. Now, who would have thought that was going to happen? The debate, the last debate they had, had the lowest audience in the history of presidential debates. I don't know if you know it. And I think the one tonight is not, it's on tonight. And yeah. I don't even well, talk about it. Would you consider it's, it's Tucker, though, that they, based on the. I numbers? like Tucker a lot. I guess I would. I think I'd say I would because he's got great common sense. You know, when they say that you guys are conservative or I'm conservative, it's not that we're conservative. We have common sense. We want to have safe borders. We want to have a wall because walls work. You know? Donald Trump is considering Tucker Carlson as one of his potential running mates in 2024. My response, as many yeses as you could possibly string together. Yeah, that, that's my current mood. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick of the establishment politicians. I'm sick of the career politicians, the Mike Pence's, the Tim Scott's, yada, yada, yada. I want non-politicians. And you know what? Non-politicians like Tucker Carlson, who happens to be one of the, you know, most canceled men in America, even better. You know, if you get canceled by the media establishment, that's pretty much how I know I can trust you because the only people who get canceled in the media, the only people who get fired from Fox News out of nowhere, out of the blue, while having literally the top rated cable show in current existence, are people who tell the truth. You know, that's Tucker Carlson's problem, that's Donald Trump's problem, and I don't know about you guys, but I like people who tell the truth. I like people especially who tell the truth when it's not convenient, who tell the truth even when it means that it's likely that they're going to get in trouble. You know, those are people I feel I can trust. Politicians who are always playing the politics game, the public perception game, and the media game. Politicians who bend and mold their viewpoints, their stances, and statements based on not offending people or furthering the status quo or media narratives. Those are people that I will never trust. Fake, slimy politicians, no more, is essentially my worldview. Someone like Tucker Carlson? Perfect. Oh, but he has no experience. I'm sick of this whole experience thing. Public service experience. All these people do is ruin our lives. It's been decades upon decades upon decades of horrible policies making our lives worse. Which makes absolutely no sense considering technological advancements, innovation. We live in the most advanced, wealthiest civilization in human history. But things are getting worse. There's only one group to blame. It's those in charge. And so maybe it's time for something new. Maybe it's time to experiment a little bit. Maybe it's time to put controversial businessmen in positions of power. People like Vivek. People like, I don't know, Elon Musk. Anyways, I feel I made my point. As usual, especially in these kinds of videos, let me know what you think. Let me know your opinion. I'm going to be reading the comment section per usual. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, friends, and I'll see you on the next one.